for this lesson, what we'll, what we'll do is um, we'll build this little color picker UI. So uh, we'll be looking at how to use panel components to build like a slider and um, something where we can drag something around. And um, so we'll be using container components and sliders. えっと、今日これ最後のセッションになります。and um, on, the, uh, on the side of it also, we'll be looking a little bit at how to create, for example, such a color ramp uh, using ramp tops and um, converting from HSV to RGB. Mm. And yeah, so let's get started with that. Um, best is to just open up a fresh touch designer. That takes a while with this computer somehow, but. And the first thing I'll do in a fresh touch designer, and because we don't need it right now, I'll close the palette. And I'll use control A, or you can right mouse button click, select all operators and delete them. So the uh, basic component to actually create a UI would be a container component. So let's add a container component. So we'll hit tab and go to the component family and find the container component. They're in the middle of the comp section here. This is all panels. There's buttons, containers, fields for text input, and sliders. And this new container, we'll call it Color Picker. And in the parameters of the Color Picker, or of the container component, we'll set the width and height to 512 by 512. Now I can have a look at this panel here. I can have a look what this looks like by right-clicking onto it and selecting view. Obviously, it, there's nothing in it, so it's just a black box with um, no, yeah, no content currently. But that's generally how you would look at a panel. Now let's go inside the color picker here. And remember, you can always tell where you are by checking the uh, paths up here, project one color picker right now. And in, inside now, we can create a couple more 
uh, yeah, panel components. And just to have a look again at this color picker, we have this color area here, then we have a color field, and we have a slider, so three components. And we'll start with the color field, with the color area there. So let's add another container comp. And let's call this one uh, Hue Sat. Because we'll be selecting the hue and the saturation. One thing to tell that there's actually a, um, that we actually have something here. Let's have a look again at our color picker UI because we just put something into it. And we can have a look at it by clicking on this little rectangle up top left where it says Open Viewer. Since both of them are black, we still don't see anything, but we can give these containers a little bit of a color. So let's add a color to the hue set by going in the parameters on the look page. And we can just make it red and turn on the alpha, the background alpha. Now, I would like for this red field here to actually fill the whole area. And I could do this by specifying the width and height, but I would have to fetch those numbers. But I can also use uh, these horizontal mode and vertical mode parameters which are currently set to fixed widths and fixed height, but I can set them to fill. <laughs> Works, yeah? Yeah. Good, nice. Okay, so this is basically how we can um, uh, make them size independent or uh, always have containers fill available space. Now, since I want to be seeing always um, what we're creating, I'm going to split my paints again. So, in the top right corner under paint options, choose split left right. And now I'll go into the hue set in one of the panes. And I'll go about creating this um, 
hue saturation ramp here. And there's um, who's familiar with the hue like HSV versus RGB? Um, mm -hmm. Who's familiar with that? Is that a common concept? Yeah, uh, just the, uh, the like that hue, what hue means. Yeah, that's all good. カラピカ、曲効果、RGBじゃなくて、HSV、Hue、サーチバリューの3つの色の要素に表現した、カラピカをクロップしてるんですけど、HSV っていうのはそのものが色表現の仕方で、これどういうものかわかりませんっていう人
あの一様にするためにアウトプットブルーは、えーとえー、1を選びます。So now I basically have an HSV image here, and I can convert this to RGB by using a top called HSV to RGB. HSV to RGB. This one is already HSV. Yeah, this one is basically HSV, and now we convert it to RGB. And once we do this, we have our um, our color picker here, the background at least. <coughs> it might be interesting to think about this. Okay, you can. You can do this with all kind of different ramps. Like we could create a circular one as well. By choosing for the ramp hue, we can choose radial. And ramp set, we could choose circular. And now you have a circular color picker in a way. But for what we want to do, we'll keep it as ramp hue horizontal and ramp set vertical. And because I always do that, at the, after the HSV、um, to RGB, we'll add a null top. And we'll call this BG for background. My next step is that I want to see this color、uh, field actually as the background of my hue set container, which is currently red. So on the parameters, Go on to the look page of the hue set component and in the background top parameter type dot slash bg. We won't break anything though, it's fine. Our next step will be to add this、um, little picker here. So we know which color, where we are selecting the color from. And to do this, we'll add another container inside of the、uh, hue set compo container component. So hit tab, go to the component family, and find the container comp. And let's set the width to 10. And instead of having to specify the height as well, change the fixed aspect parameter to use horizontal. The benefit now being that I only have to define one size and I always get a little square. 
So it's a quick way of, and you can also specify the aspect ratio. Like if you always want to have a 16 by 9 container or something like that, you can specify that there. And let's name this container picker. Now again, we can't see anything here um, because it's black. But for what we need, we just need to add some borders to this picker to see it um, on our hue set container. So go to the look page of the container and now you can choose two borders. It allows you to uh, um, select an outer border and an inner border. So for the outer border, select border B for left, right, bottom and top. And for the inner border, we'll take border A. Now you can already see that it's sitting there in the bottom corner. And we'll need to, as a next step, we'll need to position it interactively so that it can be, um, yeah, so that we can use our mouse. Uh, so you don't see it? Not in the bottom left corner? Yeah? Okay. Nice. Um, so what we want essentially is, and maybe turn off the parameters on the left side and turn on the viewer active flag of this USAT container. Um, what we want is the mouse position inside this component here. で、これをあの、ピッカーの位置をマウスインタラクティブにしたいんですが、ま、1回あの、左側のパラメータをピーを押して、非常時にして、さらにあの、Qsat のビューアーアクティブにします。で、このビューアーの中にマウスがいるときに、今どこを選択しているかっていうのが、もう値が分かってそれをフィードバックできればよいということです。And a lot of the uh, um, all these interaction values that we can get in touch designer, they come in via the panel shop. So let's add a panel shop. And I'll zoom in a little bit here. And just by rolling over my hue set, you can see all the different values that are coming in. Roll U, roll V, an indicator that I'm rolling over. And when you click on it, you get the select and the L select. L select standing for the left mouse button, M select middle mouse button, R select right mouse button. And if I drag my mouse around, like I click and drag, then the UV values are updating too. So those UV are probably the ones that I want to use to reposition my little picker.
In the panel shop, instead of selecting all the channels via the star here, we can just type UV to just pull out those two values. And let's add a null after that. Now, um, when I want to reposition the picker, if you, if you see when I drag my mouse, the UV values are between 0 and 1 for the whole panel. But my color picker here needs pixel position. So I have to multiply the U and the V value with the width and the height of my color picker. And the way I like to do this is by adding a constant chop. And in the constant chop, I will have uh, two channels, one called width and one called height. I should learn these shortcuts here. And now, um, in those two channels, I want to fetch the values, the width and the height of the parent of the hue set container. And I can do this via a little expression. So click on the, uh, either on the plus in front of the name or the plus in front of the value. And we'll type in here, and I'll zoom in, parent dot width. And in the other one, parent dot height. And parent meaning it's the, yeah, the parent, the outside container, essentially, one level up. So in our case, you set. Now I have those two values and now I need to multiply these two chops. And multiplying chops um, you can do with the mass chop. So after the panel, right click on the output of the panel chop and add a mass chop. And the mass chop accepts many inputs. You can um, attach as many other chops as you like. So let's take the output of the constant one with the width height and plug it into the mass one. And if we want to combine those two chops together with the mass, then we would choose in the parameters of the math under combined chops, multiply. It's important to uh, uh, choose combined chops instead of combined channels. Combined channels actually takes from each input the channels and combines them while combined chops takes from each chop 
as an input a channel and combines them. So there's a slight difference. And now we'll have to take these values and export them onto the picker um, XY parameters. And to export, we'll select the picker component and then so we have the parameters and then activate the viewer of the null one. And then roll over the U channel and drag it onto the X parameter of the picker component. And then choose export shop and do the same thing with B. And as a result, what you get is you can drag this rectangle around. One issue though is that you're dragging the left button corner because the position of the rectangle is determined by its left button corner. So we'll have to offset this slightly by half the width. And we can do this in the mass job because the mass job has the multi add page where we can add or subtract or multiply the values. And therefore, I'll just use the post add parameter and click on the name to bring out the expression field here. And then I'll say minus. And now I need to get to the size of the picker component. So my first reference to the picker would be up, open parentheses, close parentheses. And then I need to specify the name in single quotes, so picker. And then dot width, just the same as we did to get the width and height of the QSAT component. And divide that all by two because we just want to offset by half of the size. Oops. Everybody have that? はい。
こを選択してます。これが入ってこないんです。はい、えっ、ー、と、多分作っている階層が合っているかどうかを確認できますか。プロジェクト1のカラーピッカー、ヒューサップ、その場所のコンポーネントが選択されてて出てこないです。もしくは左側のコンポーネントがアクティブになっていないかもしれないですね。プラスマークを押して、これは。はい。What? Yeah, get the key from the t h i t i v e Oh, okay. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah, the active flag is tricky.、Um, in one way, if you don't have the active flag on,、um, you cannot interact. But with the active flag on, often you cannot move the operator, so you have then have to, you have to move it by the name or turn off active. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a funny flag. Now, let's try to click onto these. Like, we should be able, we can click anywhere in the color field and drag it around. But if we click right onto the picker and try to move it, it doesn't work. You cannot move it. And this is because we are actually clicking onto the picker now, which is on top of our hue set component. So, the hue set component doesn't register、um, a click. But we can fix this by turning on, and I have to look where that is. I always forget.、Uh, on the panel page of the picker component, there's a parameter called click through. So, if we enable that, now we can actually click again. It's not registering any clicks on the picker, but passing it onto the hue set. The picker is on the mouse. The picker is on the UI to show the key. The picker is on the mouse. 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 なので、えっと、ピッカーのちっちゃい四角自体のクリック機能をオフにしてしまえばあの単純についてくる画像として扱えます。でそれはあのパネル、えー、とのページからクリックスルーをオンにします。Is the click through on, on the hue set or on the picker? これ、on the picker? Yeah. 意味に分かりますかねそれだけ。あのピッカーの今オフセットさせてマウスの真ん中にこのあれが来るようになっピッカーが来るようになったんですけどそのせいでこいつをクリックしてるとあの動かないあのこの外側でクリックしたらついてくるんですけど連続的にクリックしてるっていう状態をこのピッカー自体が邪魔していてでここではそのピッカーにクリック機能は別にいらないのでどこを指しているかっていうのを表示するためだけに使っているのでこのピッカーのクリック機能をスルーするっていうのをオンにするそうするとあのピッカーがいてもこのままあのピッカーはクリックされないのでスルーされた状態になりますはいコンテナを作るとその親の配送で何か見たいそうですそうですでもこれもうちょっと,、えー、と具体的にこれは何ていうんですかね邪魔だから送ってるっていう使い方ですけど例えばここにはディスプレイっていうのもあるんですねディスプレイをオフにしたらオフになります例えば UI のタブみたいな形にしたかったら1をオンディスプレイオンでクリックスルーはオンで2にした時は1のディスプレイをオフでクリックスルーオンとかするとあのタブ切り替え UI だったりとか
、うん、そういう形で UI 自体は存在してるんだけど見せる見せないとか機能する機能しないとかをあのここで切り替えたりができます。えっと、両方いじれますね。あ、両方いじれますけど、サブ機能で例えば。そうですね。クリックして、そっちがアクティブにしたいんだったら、はいえっと、ディスプレイはオンかつ、クリックするはオフみたいな、そういう設定ができます。So, our next step would be, and just to、uh, bring that back into memory, our next step would be to add this slider here and this little color field. So, let's get on that. In our project, let's get outside of u s e t one level up, so you're in color picker. And let's create a slider comp here. And、um, on the left side, depending on where you are, if you're currently in Project One Color Picker, go also one level up so that you see the color picker as the complete, like the.、Um, The root component color picker basically that you see that in your、uh, your. The color value of the color is the color of the color. 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 So currently, what I can see here is that I have my hue set component and I have my slider, and in the final output, they're overlapping. I cannot,、um, they are, yeah, the slider is on top of the hue set thing, something that I want to,、uh, um, I don't want, I want to stack them.、Um, they're overlapping and I want to、uh, range them top to bottom.、Mm -hmm. That's just, yeah. So to do that,、uh, bring up the parameters of the color picker component and on the children page, Set the align parameter from none to top to bottom. Children. The image of the one from the top to the bottom, the picker, the Q-sat, the slider, the overlap, 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 the えっと、カラーピッカー一番上の階層のチルドレンのところから、えっと、これをボトムトップトゥボトム上から下に並ぶというような、ね、設定に変えます。Now you can see the nice thing is because the hue set we set that to fill, it resizes automatically. It's not getting squished or anything, but it actually resizes into its available space. So, even when I change on the layout page of the slider, if I change the height to 50, it, the hue set scales into place. The slider is a hue set, and the hue set is a color picker size. The slider is a size, and the hue set is a size. The hue set is a size, and the hue set is a size. The size is a size, and the hue set is a size. And for the slider, for the horizontal mode, let's set that to fill as well. The slider is not a good thing. It's 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 not a good t a n d l e t s r e n a m e t h i s s l i d e r t o v a l u e t h e s l i d e r o v a l u e t h i s s l i d e r a l u e The last element that I needed to add here, and this was in the left bottom corner, is a little field that shows me the color that's actually selected. So, so, 
So let's add another container comp. And I am, yeah, let's set that to, uh, actually, no, let's have a look at this. There's an issue here because now all three of them are being aligned top to bottom. So somehow what I need to do is I need to group these two, the container, which will be my little color field and the value slider, and um, have them together be, uh, have them side by side and have them together be stacked under the color field. I could do this by putting them both into another container, but I could also use a single container and parent them uh, to that new container. So let's add another container. And for this container here, let's call it um, value color. And let's set the horizontal mode to fill and the height to 50. And now I can do this funny thing that I can connect these um, vertically. Usually all the operators in touch connect horizontally. Um, so it's the output the bottom output of this new container that we just made into the top input of the container from earlier and the slider. And now these two elements here are again children of the value color container. So just as I did on the color picker parameters, for the value color children page parameters, I can choose a line left to right. Uh, what went to the value? Oh, this, um, it's the dotted line, yeah. why that came up. So the dotted line is because the uh, value container has its horizontal made to fill, horizontal mode is set to fill. And so it's dependent on the width of the value color container. And that's the dependency that's being shown here. If that makes sense. So there's no, it's, a, it's an internal connection, they're dependent on each other. And we currently can't see the slider because the color field is so big. But, or the uh, container one, which will be our color field, it's probably a good idea to just rename this to color right now. And we can fix this by setting the vertical mode to fill. And then use again the fixed aspect 
and set that to use vertical so that we always get a square. So now the color, this container here, will always be a square and it will always have the height of whatever this value color container um, dictates. Um, this basically now always has the height of the value color container mm -hmm. because it's set to fill. And I also want to set for the value container, I also want to set the vertical mode to fill. So now if I change on the value color container, on the layout page, the height, everything follows. And it probably would be nice to give this color again a border. So let's select a color component, a color container, and on the look page, let's just add a left, right, bottom, top border. And I'll just choose the border A. Now with the alignments that we set, on this container here we set the alignment top to bottom, and on this container we set the alignment uh, left to right, there are parameters that control in what order these containers are aligned. So if I want to have my color after the slider, I can do this by going to the layout page and changing the align order to, for example, one. The same is I could place the value color, um, I could place that above the HSV field by changing its align order as well. So it's a good idea to keep this sorted and maybe set the value color to one, the align order to one. And also set the align order for value to one, so we have it all properly defined. Set the value align order. So our next step would be to fetch the color, like what color are we actually selecting here? And we have three elements for the whole thing. We have our hue saturation via the position of our knob, and we have this value slider, which actually has an output that gives us the slider's value that's currently selected. So I'm going to click on this little green um, output on the value component here on the slider and add a null chop. And as a next step, I'll go back into the um, hue set component here, but I'll do this on the left side for 
um, making it a little bit easier for me to navigate things here. So on the left side, I'm in hue set, and on the right side, I'm in project one color picker. And yeah, so how do I get now the color? Currently, our color is defined as um, three different chop values. We have U for the hue, V for the saturation, and then this V1 as the value. So I somehow want to combine these three values so that I can interpret them as a color. And um, therefore, the first step would be to add a new um, a merge job where I can merge two things together. And I do this by middle mouse clicking on the output of the panel container and picking the merge. The nice thing about the middle mouse button is that it creates a new branch. And how do I get the value from the null one here? Well, I can use a select job. So let's create a select job. Oh, we can catch you up. はい。なんかやんなきゃいけないとかはないんですよ。はい。その機能を持ってるのがまあパネルっていう感じですね。はい。このラインのパネルはそれを持ってますけど、他はそれを持ってない。あの3Dオブジェクトとか。ここはそのパネルチョップが活躍できる。あともう一個あのパイソンでパッと切るやり方の二通り。はい。あんまり変わらない。そうですね。まあこれ二個なんでやるしかないんですけど、ボタンが三十個になったらどうするもんだとか。ガーって入れちゃってもいいんですけど、まあこれ親子関係を作って、そうですね。ちょっと補足説明すると、今こう親子関係
正直このカラーピッカーぐらいだったら手で配置しちゃった方が早いんですけどボタンが何十個にもなったりとかなった時は全部等間隔にきれいにボタンを並べたいとか隙間なく並べたいっていう時とか手探りでやると大変なのでこの機能をうまく使うととても便利です。他に何か質問があったりしますでしょうか And so the next step is to uh, connect the select shop into the merge. And then drag the null one that we added to our value slider onto the select shop and choose the, uh, um, the first thing here, parm shop relative. で、which will essentially um, it fills in the parameter the chop parameter for the select and it points one level up, which is where our value chop is, and then selects the um, selects its current value into the select chop. And I'll just add a null after here. And these three channel values now we can convert into a top because basically we have three color values. So after the null, let's add a chop to top. And I usually add those, even if it's a different family, I'll add it by right-clicking onto the output of the chop, then go to the top family, and then pick the chop to. え、通常あの、色の違うファミリーのえ、オペレーターどうしか繋がらないんですが、え、ここで右クリックしてトップの画面に行くと、これだけは選べるものもいくつかあって、それを選択すると自動でえっと、エクスプレッションされた状態でえ
で今、えっと、カラピカを HSV 系で作ったので今これ可視化されているものも RGB と3つのチャンネルに画像を入れてますが今表現されているのは HSV 系になるのでこれを HSV から RGB に変換する必要があります。So we'll add an HSV to RGB. また、えー、同じく HSV to RGB を使います。Is that fairly correct? And we can test that here. If I open up the viewer for color picker, ちょっとテストするので、さっきのオープンビューアーを開いて、えー、マウスを動かしていくと、カラーが変化しているかどうか確認します。And change the value slider as well. The value of the value is changed. You can see how we are actually picking the right color.、Um, now, would use, I would like to use this color as the background top for my color component here. So, somehow, I want to get this outside of the hue set component and onto the background parameter on the look page here. Into this parameter. The color の component には今選んでるカラーを表現されたいので、さっきと同じように Q サットのバックえっ、ー、とグランドトップに EG を選択したようにこの、えー、できた、えー、で画像を指定します。So perhaps one way to do this, I can right-click on the output of the HSV to RGB adjust and add an out top. でその後ろにえっ、ー、とアウトトップを作ります。And now see how suddenly on the hue set component there's a new output, a purple output, which we just created, and I can add a null top to that. And this null I can use as the background top for my color look background top parameter. でこのヌルを、まあえー、カラーのバックグラウンドに使えるのでそれをドラッグアンドします。So I should have I should have a complete color picker here。これで、えー、カラーピッカーが、えー、このように機能するはずです。And if I would like to see now What the RGB values are, because currently I only have HSV values, I don't have the RGB values as channels. We could convert this top again into channels using a top to chop. So I'll right click on the output of the null2 and go to the chop family and pick a top to chop. The top, uh, えー、と HSV 系のトップの値を画像にして RGB にして、えー、と画面に表示をしたんですが、まあ、カラーピッカーとしては最終的に値を数値で使う必要があるのでこれを、えー、とチョップトゥトップトゥチョップを使ってトップからチョップに変換して、えー、とまた画像から RGB の数値に戻します。So that as the output of my color picker. I actually get the right color channels. Um. Two last steps here. One thing is, you might realize when you drag this outside, when you try to drag the thing outside of the field, that the whole、um, ramp shifts downwards. And this is because my picker. And here on the left side, I'm still in project one color picker hue set. My picker position is actually outside of the size, but、um, touch tries to a top to bottom approach still display everything. The top to bottom, the, 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 the,
のリサイズを勝手にするようにしているので、えー、とこのピッカーが外に行ってしまうとそれに合わせてそのリサイズの機能がまた勝手に働いてしまいます。But if I go one level up and look at the parameters for hue sat, で、1個上のレベルに上がって、ヒューサットのパラメータを見ます。I can go, where is it? Sorry. Um, we do have a parameter to turn this behavior off. I just also can't find it. One second.、Uh, look, no. Oh, it's in children. Is it? Yes. Children crop. Turn the、um, cropping on, on the hue set component on the children page, crop to on. The hue set to no. Children's page, the crop to on is the other one. And now, while my color, my picker kind of leaves the, leaves the area, but at least my,、um, it's not, yeah, it keeps the ramp in place. The color picker, the 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 Um, as a viewer. So if your viewer flag is on, turn it off, your viewer active, and right click onto the component and select view. And now, what I would like to do is instead of scaling the image, I would like to actually change the size of my control panel. えー、と右クリックしてビューを押すとあのこのようにカラピックが開けるんですがこうやってリサイズをしても同じように機能します。So instead of this picker here increasing in size, I always want it basically to be a 10 pixels. でピッカーはあの色を指定するのでこのサイズを全体のピッカーのサイズが大きくなったとしてもカラーピックする場所のサイズは常に10ピクセルで固定をしたいです。And this is something, if I go to the layout page of the color picker component and turn on size from window, then when resizing it, oh. で、えー、カラーピッカーコンテナの、えー、レイアウトのサイズフロムウィンドウをオンにします。And then、uh, I have to close it and open it again. But what I now can do, and you can follow this in the width and height here, I can actually resize it, and it's,、um, the size is updating as well. One thing that's happening is that it's always um, scaling um, with an aspect ratio. But on the panel page, and this is a little bit、uh, weird position, but on, on the panel page there's floating viewer aspect, which I can set to unconstrained. And I have to close this and open it again. And at this point, I can now change the size. To anything I want, and it's going to be、uh, yeah, updating correctly. Panel no floating viewer aspect, of the whole. The unconstrained. Unconstrained to syntax to you to the other day. The network will be right away. No, the body, a 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 no, the body. And we have built a color picker. これでカラーピッカーができました。Um, any questions? 何か質問はありますでしょうか、nope. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. 特になさそうでしょうか Sorry? 
Well, you do this, you don't have to do it basically because uh, um, the, um, the idea is, the, it's the general idea in touches that everything starts from nothing. And, but those are things that everybody, um, they're in the palette and they're pre-built. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a level of like you start from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> um, this example I thought so gives a good idea of. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, not not this much. Yeah. <laughs> But a funny fact or a funny thing in Touch is uh, that a lot of the UI is built with Touch itself. So, um, like you can, uh, if you want to know how the upgrade dialog was built, then if you hit F10, wait, function F10, F11, one second doesn't want to let's go to this thing here why is that not working okay there's a shortcut which is um, F10 which should have worked but a lot of these dialogues that are in touch are actually networks as well so the upgrade dialog that you're using so much um, is hiding in UI dialogs menu up and that's the upgrade dialog here mm -hmm. which is built out of touch designer, touch designer. Touch designer. yeah so it's all これ今タッチデザイナーはタッチデザイナーでできているっていう名言があるんですけど、今作ってたUIの塊そのものがタッチデザイナーで、あのそうですね。下のタイムラインみたいなものとか、このいつも使ってるオペレーターを作るダイ
出していけば自分で UI そのものをゼロから作るということはしなくてもいろいろ作れます。And you can find more complex UIs as well in the palette.、Uh, for example,、uh, Kantan Mapper uses a quite、um, more complex UI. Oh, what the hell? That's amazing. I have no clue what's happening right now. <laughs> I heard you made this function, Kantan Mapper. Yeah. Kantan Mapper is a UI that 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 is But you can go, like, you can see what,、um, again, also, it's all open. All these components are all open and you can explore them,、um, fix them if they're broken. <laughs> no, we'll fix them, yeah.、Um, It came back nice. So、um, I think that's it, and I think we'll just gather in the other room for the last hour、mm -hmm. and maybe look at a couple things that are coming up in Touch Designer that we're、uh, working on and that will be、uh, um, yeah, released in the next、uh, couple months. So、um, please join us over there if you like, and thank you very much for attending, and I hope you learned lots. えっと、なんか隣の部屋で何か多分やってるらしいので、まあ、皆さんそっちに交流してくださいで今日のセッションはこれで終わりで、まあ、来てくれてありがとうもっと自分の勉強して頑張ってくださいということです、はい、じゃあありがとうございました